Hey, 49ers fans, I'm Thomas Mont. Welcome to Chat Sports, and today, how about those Niners? Let's put a grade on their massive win over the Seattle Seahawks, a win that puts them not only as the NFC West champs, but also as the number one overall seed. Come on, how excited are you guys today? I mean, this is, this is a great Monday. It's a very good Monday. Before we start, though, thumbs up, show some love for our 49ers, smash that like button if you guys appreciate being the number one overall seed. Without further ado, let's go ahead, jump right into it. All right, so before we jump into the grades, I want to go ahead and give you guys the full playoff picture, exactly what happened, what yesterday meant for the 49ers. Many of you guys know, but just to make sure we're on the same page, here we go. So, of course, they won the NFC West last night. They are NFC West champs. It feels like forever since they've done that. And by winning the NFC West, and by virtue of the fact they had already beaten the Packers and the Saints, they are the number one seed. They have a bye this coming week, so they will not play during wildcard weekend. And then they will host the lowest winning seed for the divisional round. So, your NFC playoff picture looks like this. 49ers 1, Packers 2, Saints 3, Eagles 4, Seahawks 5, Vikings 6. Meaning, Eagles-Seahawks is the 4-5 matchup, Vikings-Saints is the 3-6 matchup, which also means the 49ers are guaranteed to be playing one of the following three teams in the divisional round. Seahawks, Eagles, or Vikings. They cannot play the Saints because they'll be playing the lowest winning seed, and the Saints would be the highest winning seed from the wild card round, at least going into the divisional round. So, it's an extra week to get healthy. It's an extra week to figure out, you know, who's going to be starting on the defensive line, who should be ready to go in the secondary. You know, there's the Tart injury. There's the D4 situation. It's a lot of things that benefit from having an extra week off, really two whole weeks, as you have this week, and then game week going into the, do the divisional round. Overall, last night's win was so crucially important. We talked about it for weeks here on the 49ers report, basically saying the five seed, tough path to go three road games. The one seed, two home games. You're done. That's it. Super Bowl's next in Miami. So we're looking really, really good right now. Cannot give enough credit to the San Francisco 49ers. Hopefully they're rested up. Hopefully the injuries kind of work themselves out. We'll have plenty of updates to that more as we continue on here at this channel later on in the week. Right now, though, if you're watching on YouTube, you're going to get a little ad pop up. Don't worry about it. Just scroll down. Let it run. Answer this question. Who do you guys want to face in the divisional round if you could pick? Philadelphia, the Vikings, or the Seahawks? I want to know which team you would rather play in the divisional round and why. Let me know in the comment section down below. All right, let's go ahead and start with our offensive grades overall. I'm actually going to give the offense a B plus. This was, to me, in what essentially was a playoff game, at least felt like a playoff game in a hostile environment. It's a very good football team. As good of an offensive performance as you could have hoped. They cruised through the first half. At one point, Jimmy Garoppolo was 9 for 9. They were rolling over Seattle. They did have you know, a lull in the third quarter, and the Seahawks came back, and the defense gave up some points. We'll talk about that in a second. But overall, Mostert, or sorry, Mostert had an incredible day. Over 100 yards rushing, two rushing touchdowns, caught the ball out of the backfield. He was fantastic. Jimmy G, we'll talk more about him in a second. No big turnovers, very, very efficient. And Debo Samuel, did he have his best game as a 49er? He was the number one target for Jimmy Garoppolo this past Sunday night. I mean, overall, this offense was really, really good. Juszczyk had some great blocks down the field, great catch down the field. Kittle, of course, was George Kittle. And the offensive line, only two sacks of Jimmy Garoppolo the entire day. They held up there under the bargain and really did not let Jadavion Clowney wreck the game as we had kind of hoped that he would not. But overall, offense for me is going to get a B plus, almost 400 yards, 270 through the air, 128 on the ground. And again, one sack of Jimmy Garoppolo. One or two, I can't remember what it was right now at this point. I believe it was two sacks of Jimmy Garoppolo if I'm reading my notes correctly. But overall, a good day by the offensive line. The overall offensive grade is a B plus. Defense, gotta give them an A-. I mean, I know, they gave up 14 points in the fourth quarter. Russell Wilson drove them all back and they were this close to winning the football game. I mean, they were really, really close to winning that football game and yet, here we are. The defense was, honestly, for besides those couple of drives, really, really good the entire day. 348 total yards of offense, 125 rushing, 223, 223 passing. But really, the big factor that we all were worried about, Marshawn Lynch, not a factor. I mean, what, 12 carries for 35 yards. Lynch did have the leaping touchdown at the goal line. So what? whoop de doo But as a lot of you guys commented in the comment section said, Marshawn Lynch is not going to be as big of a threat as people thought, and sure enough, he was not. The defensive line only had one sack, but they got after Russell Wilson time and time again. I think they had nine total quarterback hits. They played a lot better than they have the past couple of weeks. Talk more about that in a second. The only real struggle for the defense, in my opinion, was the secondary. I feel like Akella Witherspoon got beat a lot by DK Metcalf and the other wide receivers. I think he is 
you know, struggling right now in man-to-man -man coverage. We'll have to keep an eye on that. But overall, a great defensive performance. Give them an A-. minus. I don't want to see the comments down below saying, oh my goodness, they gave up 14 points and we almost lost the football game. Yes. Okay, Russell Wilson... Spoiler alert, really, really good. That entire Seattle Seahawks team, really, really good. But our defense stepped up. They got the stops when they needed to, and they got the biggest stop of the game, which essentially won the football game at the one-inch yard line. Give some love for our 49ers defense down below. What did you guys give? What overall rating would you guys give the 49er defense? A, B, C? Let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below. Quickly, special teams here, because we got to give special teams a grade. They get an A-. minus. Robbie Gold made both of his field goals, didn't miss extra points. He was fine. Kick coverage a little bit iffy. Tyler Lockett had that one kick return for like 17, 18 yards, and you're like, mm, let's sure that up a little bit. But overall, A-. minus. Special teams is just fine. Before we move on, no game for the Niners this weekend, but in two weeks, you want to bet on our 49ers, really bet on any NFL game. How about our friends at BetDSI, chatsports.com forward slash bet. Use the promo code 49ers. That is the best key to get in on a 120% deposit bonus whenever you sign up with our friends. As we said, BetDSI. So again, chatsports.com forward slash bet. Use our promo code 49ers. Okay, individual grades. Let's get them going right now. Jimmy Garoppolo, honestly an A-. minus. Now the stats are not anything special. 18 of 22 for 285. No touchdown, no picks, but he started off hot. Like we said, 9 for 9, moving the ball up and down the field. Relying on that running game. Great scheming to get some big running lanes for Mostert and even Debo Samuel on the end around but no big interception. Jimmy Garoppolo did not have that crucial, you know, third quarter, fourth quarter, red zone, 10-yard line interception that he's come to be not known for because Jimmy Garoppolo's not known for that stuff, but you and I both know it's like, Jimmy, don't do it this game, please. And sure enough, he did not. In my opinion, he had a really, really good night. If he does that, honestly, maybe to add one passing touchdown for the rest of the postseason, I feel like the Niners are going to be in good position to win every single game. Before we move on, we hit 11,000 subscribers by Christmas Day. Thank you to all 11,000 of you guys for subscribing. Can we get to 12,000 by the new year? Maybe click the red subscribe button. We would greatly appreciate it. All right, running backs always do them. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stop harping on Raheem Mostert. I'm gonna stop saying that Mostert, you know, should not be the number one back and that Breida should get more carries and that Tevin Coleman deserves to get these touches. No, a plus for Raheem Mostert. He is the starter for this offense. I don't know what happened with Brita. I don't know what happened with Coleman, but they like Mostert. And sure enough, he showed off again. 10 carries, 57 yards on the ground. Two rushing touchdowns. Also added a pair of catches out of the backfield. He is he is the running back that they're going to be re re excuse me, relying on going forward. I mean, he is the guy. And this is your playoff number one running back in Raheem Mostert. It might not be sexy. It might not be as fun as thinking about the free agent edition, Tevin Coleman, and then, of course, Matt Breida, the homegrown guy. You know, it's like, no, this is who you have. And guess what? He's the best running back on this team right now. We have to enjoy it. We have to be excited about it going forward. How confident are you guys that Raheem Mostert being the number one running back here right now? Type Y down below for yes, that you are confident. Type N down below for no, that you are not confident. Although you should push Y because he's proven, in my opinion, to be the number one back and should be the number one back going forward. Who's also been proving himself, Debo Samuel. Throw him up, gets an A minus. He showed up yet again. And a night again, when Emmanuel Sanders had like two, three catches, was a non-factor, which, by the way, I don't know if it's the fact that Emmanuel Sanders is not really as good as we thought he was, or if the rib injury is still bothering him. No idea, but Debo stepped up, all caught all five of his targets, and had that end-around touchdown, which showed his elusiveness and his ability to make people miss. He has started as a rookie here, week one, and just slowly started a trend all the way up where he looks like a true receiver right now. Maybe not a true number one, but a top two target, not only in this offense, but could be in anybody's offense. This is a draft pick that has hit. This is going to be a good player for us going forward. And anytime you have a guy who catches five balls for 102 yards, you've got to give him credit where credit is, is due. A minus for Debo Samuel. It's not an A plus because he had that weird drop of the goal line that could have been intercepted. So just don't let it happen again. I know it was dropped, but still... Anyway, let's go ahead and move on to our next guy here. Before we do, though, a couple of sale items here with our friends uh, at chatsports.com forward slash 49 sale. A ton of great 49ers gear post-Christmas sales right now. Guys are going to be a little chilly for the divisional game, maybe a little chilly for the NFC Championship game. Get a hat, get a sweater, get a hoodie, whatever you guys want. Chatsports.com slash 49 sale. A lot of great deals are right there. Okay, I did D-line last week, so I want to do D-line again because we mentioned that the defensive line has been struggling the past couple of weeks. They look pretty good. One sack, I'm still going to give them an A- minus because they had 
what, nine total quarterback hits. Russell Wilson is a hard guy to tackle regardless, and yet the 49ers were able to get him on the ground. Maybe not when he had the football, but after he threw, they punished him for a lot of those throws, and that really rattled him, at least until the final drive of the football game when he was... Let's be honest, you know, being the good Russell Wilson that we came to expect. We talked about how they wanted to pull back the reps of uh, Nick Bosa, pull back the reps of Eric Armstead last week, and it looks like it worked out very, very well. Now they're going to get an extra week of rest for the bye week and roll right into the divisional round. Really as, as healthy as you could possibly be. The D-line gets an A-minus. They were really, really good. The only real defensive player... I'm going to give a bad grade to who actually really did struggle from the tape that I went and watched this morning. Akella Witherspoon. I mean, the cornerback who started off so hot, got injured, came back a little bit spotty, sharing reps with Emmanuel Mosley. He gets a C+. Plus. He got beat a lot. He got beat on the David Moore touchdown. He got beat by DK Metcalf. In man coverage, he seems to be struggling right now to the point that they're like not even throwing at Richard Sherman's side. They just keep throwing to either K1 Williams in the slot or Witherspoon or Mosley on the left side. So I don't think you have to bench Witherspoon and just put Mosley in because both are struggling right now, but I got to give him a bad grade because from the tape that I went back and watched after watching the game last night, you're like, man, there's that David Brown or David Moore touchdown. Oh man, there's DK Metcalf on a slant. Oh, there's DK Metcalf on a stop. It's like, you know, pick it up a little bit, Witherspoon. Five tackles, two pass deflections, no interceptions. Just kind of a Mm, not what I wanted to see from a Keller Witherspoon kind of day. Final grade, though, I did want to see this. Dre Greenlaw. We've gotten on Dre Greenlaw a lot on this show, being the rookie linebacker, filling in for Kawan Alexander. has been up and down, especially in pass coverage. How about his day? Yes, I know. He lowered his shoulder and kept Hollister out of the end zone and saved the day. That's the play you're going to remember. But he had 13 tackles, 11 of them solo in this game, including one tackle for a loss and one quarterback hit. He was really as good as you can be at the linebacker position against a football team that not only was trying to run the football with Marshawn Lynch, but also can sneak tight ends, sneak fullbacks, sneak guys like Hollister out of the backfield and from the tight ends position and get them as open as possible. They were exposing the middle of the field a little bit during the, uh, was it third or late in the fourth quarter? I can't really remember at this point, but Greenlaw stood his ground and played very, very well. Hats off to him. He gets an A- minus from me for getting those 13 tackles and saving the day. So thumbs up for Greenlaw for saving the day at the end zone because that could have changed the entire course of this season, and yet it did not. What overall grade would you guys give the 49ers? Let me know in the comment section down below. I would say A-, minus. I'd say B+. Plus. You know, I mean, it was a good overall day for San Francisco, obviously, and the fact that they're able to lock in the number one overall seed is as exciting as it comes. Happy Victory Monday. Happy number one overall seed. Enjoy the bye week. Although, subscribe here. Plenty of news coming up this week. We'll get you updated on all the injuries as we always do here at Chat Sports. For Chat Sports, I'm Thomas Mott signing off. Again, enjoy the Victory Monday. 49er fans, glad you guys got to watch the video. Hopefully, we're cruising all the way to the Super Bowl. I'll be there alongside you guys just like I want it to be at the start of the season. Man, we're excited. Signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day.